What we're sitting on right now is we're sitting on the block that I really came up and it was like, wow, uh, this is the one that got me to follow over to where we got the ankylosaur. And if you can trace my hand here, what we're looking at right here is the outline up to here of a very large rib. This rib, I think if you had the whole thing, would easily be seven, eight, nine feet long as it curved around. And down in here, what you have is you have, it's, it, it's a very obscure looking piece of bone, but what you're looking at is the top of a vertebra. And as I trace my hand around down here, this is where it's broken off the round piece or the centrum that a lot of people are used to seeing of a vertebra. And if we, if we follow it down here, you see this going in here. Now there's a, a dark area right here. This is where the notochord or the um, spinal cord would have gone through on this particular animal. But it was, it was a very big broad. I, if, if you were to, to put the centrum on this, this vertebra would be this tall. It's a very, very, very large animal. But you can see that there's a, this lighter color, this white, and this really offsets in this darker color of the rock here. So you really can see it. And, um, and it, it's, it's overwhelming. It's, it's something that you, you got to, if you were to walk up and see it, it kind of takes your breath away. Sort of pod remain up there. There's more up there. If you look, and just about every single rock that you look up, you'll see that bluish color. So uh, it's pretty, uh, it's pretty, it's pretty remarkable. But yeah, these are the teeth right here. There are certain areas where they are, and that's where you got to look. And that's always been kind of a uh, in me. So this is an area where carcasses got washed in, and these big theropod, these meat-eating dinosaurs, would come in and eat on them, and they'd lose their teeth. It's like a steak knife. And that's very diagnostic in, in, in identifying meat-eating dinosaur teeth, is that they'll have serrations on it. And these things are just like a steak knife, and they're designed to cut down into the meat, whatever it's biting. And they bite in, and hit a bone, and snap them off, but they grow a new one back. So, but yeah, it's very, very cool. Very neat. And sitting right next to a bunch of dinosaur bone down here. It just blows me away. And every time you get a good rain, you come over here and you see more of it. That's why the only stuff that, that gets prepped out of this stuff is one-of-a-kind things. And that's why this stuff will probably sit here because the museums have a lot of this stuff and they just don't have the resources to be able to bring these kind of blocks in and prep them out. I'm probably sure I'm not the first human to see it, but probably the first hum modern human to see it. I don't know. What we have to do is we have to get this cleaned out. Cleaned out. We have to get that okay. where he's at. So this is a this is an open spot that goes down mm -hmm. that That's we've dug out. So we need to get all of this okay. out. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Because um, we have more bone material down here and it's all up here. Yeah. So we just need to take out all the dirt and okay. Yeah. Start sliding it back if we can. Right. And I can start moving this. I can move it over there. So, I was just putting it up. Okay, that's okay. So I just slide it back down. That's okay, why yeah, it won't be in the way. Works. You just gotta have it to, to reach up. got something that nobody's ever seen before. And that was 16 and a half years ago. Um, in that 16 and a half years, I've literally had hundreds of people up here that have helped. Um, I've only got a few that have stayed with me. Uh, one of them is a friend of mine, uh, Mike Pickering, and the other one uh, is Mitch Davis, who's up here with us today. I'm also a Taekwondo teacher and uh, I have uh, a school in Westminster, Colorado. And uh, I've been doing that for a very long time. In fact, that's how I've met some of my volunteers. A lot of my volunteers have come from my Taekwondo class. I'm a uh, high school science teacher at uh, North Glen High School. Is it this? Is it 
my passion of science and dinosaurs and rocks and this kind of stuff with the, with the students. Let's see if we can get that to break loose right there, because if we can get it to break loose, pull it out. Earlier this year, I was out here with uh, Mike and Mitch, and we went to check on these rocks again. And I, there was a crack in it, and I cracked open the rock. And I looked down, and I go, oh my god, we have the skull. And this is what we've been looking for. The skull is really that key piece of a dinosaur that you can really look at, and you can say, this is, this is what it is, and it's, it's a diagnostic tool, and it's something that you can compare it with other dinosaurs and say this is closely related to it, or it isn't closely related to it. The problem is, is it was in a 500, 600 pound block. Uh, we got very excited about it, and then I started going, well, I don't want to get too excited because science is not jumping to conclusions. Science is looking at evidence and putting evidence together. You see the nostril right here, then you see the teeth running up into here. This is the back of the skull. These are your quadrate. This is your quadrate right here. This is the front. That's your um, the beak. This thing had like a beak. And then this is the top of the skull. So right up in here you're looking at, you know, this it's it's going in like this. And so this is pretty much the end of it, but there's some jugal horns and some other stuff um, that we need to, to get out. So this will be the this will this will this is the completing piece of it. So this is what we're trying to get out right here. This is it. It's the only one in the world. So all this work is for this piece. We've been out here for probably, well, close to 40 hours worth of work total. Just on this piece. Just on this piece. Yeah. So, and you see, this is 40 hours and we still don't have it out. That's not including the uh, probably two or 300 hours of prep work in the museum, in the lab. The bone has a different density than the rock. So that's why it absorbs water differently. But uh, yeah, so that's it. As we start cutting through here, we saw, you could see this, um, that circular area there, and then as we take it off, you can see the femur coming down. So We have some rib material that's coming from this rock, and it's going through and around um, through here. We have armor pieces. Uh, littered throughout this block and they started to stack up. It's like if you dumped bones in, a, in running water they're all going to eventually stack up and they're going to start clumping up and that's what we have. We're starting to get them clumped up in here. So you have a lot of the armor and uh, you've got a lot of the, uh, the other pieces in there. So yeah this is this is a, this is a world-class piece of rock right here. Those are pretty heavy duty looking. Yeah they are. They're for wood. Right here. Yeah, I can see it. I think that this. I'm gonna keep digging that. Because it's definitely moving. Because when I put that in, it's moving that block out. Well, let's yeah, try it right there then. Yeah. Uh, the Museum of Nature and Science in Denver has the skull that they're working on right now. They are prepping it out. It's, a, it's a, an extremely labor-intensive process. Uh, when I gave it to them, they were thinking a year, which is a good estimate. So they're going to have literally people working on it for a year to get this thing out of the rock so that we can see it, so that we can see what it looks like. You know, all the work that we do and all the things that we see, that's going to be that time when I can pick up that skull and look at it in the eye and go, so that's what you look like. <laughs> that's what you look like because I don't really know what it looks like right now and it's frustrating. It's in this big old piece of rock and I don't know what it looks like, but it's really going to be exciting and when it, when it smiles at me, I'm going to be smiling back. Mitch, you go ahead and use that in that crack right there. You're going to use that 
little sledgehammer, so use that wedge. You, you get her, oh, Hey, hang on. No. Why don't you go ahead? I see a crack. There's a crack running. Yeah, we got it. But it's not breaking. <laughs> I'm so terrified. <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>
careful, Bill. Watch your face. Yeah, Be careful if that rope comes off and they come back. It's going to flip right now, so. That's okay, that's right. Wow. That's good. Hello. Yeah, Bill. Hi. That hasn't seen some mic. Nice job, guys. Do I got the camera open? Oh, my God. Oh, yeah, I got to get plugged in. Set. All right. Not really, though. All worked it. Uh, Woo! This part right here, this is where we found the other limb bone. Woo! Got it, man. Nice. Oh, nice. Oh, How do you feel, kid? I <laughs> Oh, this is exciting. This is exciting. This is, man, this you have guys have no idea, man. This is 16 years of work that you guys helped. You guys helped get it. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. I hope I got the right yeah. bed. Okay. Smile. Oh. Oh, dude. Where's the opposer? There you go. His nickname is It's Chair Killer Davis. We'll tell that story tonight. From all the chairs I've killed? Yeah. Hands <laughs> and chairs. <laughs> I burned a chair in the fire last time. Yeah. How did you do that? Well, Kelly hates chairs. What do you think? Oh yeah. Yeah. He oh, didn't God. even ask him to do it. He did it for nothing. He did. I just got up in the morning and my chair was dead. So this is paleo bond, so it's for stabilizing. Um, so it's glue that goes in between some of the cracks. Yeah, the bone is actually quite porous, so it'll suck it up like a sponge. It'll stabilize it, uh, so when we come back in a couple of years, it'll still be stabilized. Did you hear that? Yeah. Is that yeah. the calcite coming out? I don't know. I think what happened is you had, is that it started to um, it set really fast, and the bone was so porous it sucked it in, and the air was just hissed Shoot out. Now. Oh. Yeah, it hissed out. Now, I never had that happen before. Do we want to? This was stabilized last time. Yeah, that was stabilized. Let's. Uh, Let's go ahead and locate any little pieces of bone in there, and then let's get a line. Can we see the skull over here? How far down is it? I think we're okay as far as a break. So it's on the top, it's right here. Yeah, we're pretty, I think we're pretty good. I think even if it breaks, it's not gonna break along the skull. This is something totally new. And it was at that point I realized that patience really does pay off. And I looked for 16 years looking for it and I was one inch away. I was this far away from finding it. But in concrete, one inch could be 100 feet. You just don't know until you just happen to be lucky, I guess.
The Dinosaur Depot in Canyon City has uh, uh, a footprint that we've got, and we believe that uh, it's the oldest ankylosaur footprint in the world. It's a very significant find because it not only is the oldest one in the world, but it is the biggest one in the world. And when we look at this, we're thinking that we've got this animal that was three times bigger than any of these other kinds of animals that we're finding in the Jurassic. That's really significant because that gives you, I guess, passion to go out and look for these big pieces of ankylosaur that nobody else has found.
have any footholds right now. Two, three. Yeah, no, I can't. Let me step up. All right. Hey. One, two, three. You spend your entire life working on something and you find one piece and you think, well that's it, am I done? Because that's the, you know, that's that one piece that everybody's looking for. But in reality, you're not done. You're always, you're always looking. And I've always been that way. I think one of my favorite shirts is, says, not all who wander are lost. Because I wander around a lot, a lot. And I'm never lost. I'm always looking for stuff. I'm always finding stuff. That's what we do.